Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, look, I know you see three people up on your screen right about now. You may know Frank Clifford. Frank Clifford is the principal and person who runs the London School of Astrology. And you might've heard something about the fact that the London School of Astrology and Synchronicity University have joined forces for Embracing the Community, a celebration of astrologies. It is the online conference event of the year taking place over the autumn equinox weekend of 2021. And so today we're doing something a little different because Frank and I together are going to be talking to Richard Swatton. Richard is brilliant. This is something I know about him because Frank told me he was brilliant and I believed it. I didn't need to know anything else. But apparently Richard is a psychotherapist and he's been studying astrology for 40 years. And he's a senior tutor at the London School of Astrology. He's got a YouTube channel. He's got a book in the works called The Hori Process as well. So welcome, Richard. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's great to be here from across the herring pond, as we used to call it. That's the Atlantic Ocean for you and I. Okay, the herring pond? Yes, it's an old, old colloquialism from old England. Um, the herring pond, you know, where everybody goes out and catches fish. It sounds, it sounds so colloquial, as you said. It sounds yes, so it's quite antique, but uh, <laughs> now, I, thought I, better, I thought I better qualify it before, before it, it sounded too peculiar. But that's what I they call it. The I love Ocean. you already. I see the why, why Frank loves you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I, I did go to school for a year in England many, many years ago. Well, and which one? I went to the University of Kent. So I did my master's in cosmology and divination. That was the program run by Jeffrey Cornelius. Oh, so Patrick you know Carino. Jeffrey. Oh, yes. Jeffrey uh, is yes. Uh, my dear professor. Yes. And yes, I wonderful. learned well from him. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, we have a mutual, we have a mutual uh, acquaintance stroke friend stroke, um, a, a person of uh, great learning. In, yes. In, in, yes, I was invited actually down to there to do a lecture uh, for them uh, a few years ago, uh, and it was uh, it was nice to see. It's a shame they've stopped now because you know there's closures and uh, all of that. But uh, a lot of good people down there wanting a kind of um, uh, uh, a, a depth of analysis, let's say, back into you know Neoplatonism and symbolism, and they I think they include a bit of um, James Hillman and so on. Uh, anyway, look, um, yes, there's no apparently about it. Yes, uh, I, I am a psychotherapist. I became a professional one in um, in 94. And uh, that was actually due to, um, I, I believe it was largely due to being with Liz Green and Howard Susportus and Darby Costello and all of those people around about 1985 is when I went on the uh, Centre for Psychological Astrology course, and um, it was a, a great honour, great privilege to to do that. And I was so impressed that um, I decided to become a therapist after that. I was a musician. It took me about ten years to trans, you know, to uh, to to change from uh, from being a professional jazz pianist and teacher to to astrologer, stroke um, a psychotherapist, but. Um, Eventually, I did it. So that it was instrument astrology has been all the way through from me since fifteen, and um, but it's been instrumental in my in my life and my career, as well as obviously a a very um, important uh, guide, if you like, for life. You know. So, so yes. not only are you uh, an astrologer and a psychotherapist, but what you're telling us is that you're a cool dude. Is what you're saying because you were a jazz musician i love it and not only that not only are we connected through jeffrey cornelius the great jeffrey cornelius who i love so much but we're also connected through the great frank clifford as well of course we are yes of course we are, we are the globe the globe trotting frank clifford you have yeah. a moon in sagittarius frank has jupiter on the mc in the aquarius so what happens with that the world is his friend yes. and the world is his um, 
is he, he groups together in that it's, 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 Jupiter, where does he belong? Everywhere, you know, those two words, everywhere, are related obviously to Aquarius and to the, the world is your friend. So he's, he's made uh, great strides in China, in Japan, in uh, Australia, in, um, in America, in England, obviously, in Turkey. And, and those are just the ones I know about. He's always probably, you know, got, got his fishing line abroad and, and, and reeling people in, as it were, you know, and, and I, th I think there's an even a greater advantage on the internet now, now we have this. So, of course, the great, which is another Jupiterian world, Frank yes. Caffin, here he is, the London School of Astrology man himself, who well, took I, it. I, I have yeah. a confession as well. I've got um, uh, invited Richard recently to do a course for, um, for the LSA in China. Uh, on horror and he's done one before and this time the feedback is um that the student think he's doing some sort of magic ah. and that made, that made me laugh because um he's uh, richard is hugely intuitive but what he's doing in at, at our conference embracing the community conference um in september is showing you how to get there how to use your associations to work with the natal chart. And we'll talk about this, no doubt, in a minute. But um, the, the feedback is he's doing some sort of magic in China. And I think that's such a lovely compliment uh, with, the, with the work that Richard, Richard does as a, as a therapist, as an intuitive, as an astrologer, and uh, mm. um, very learned. Um, so Richard is currently teaching horary for me, where he combines all the skills of the ho traditional horary astrologer with the the intuition and the ability to uh yes to intuit what what is um what's Im important in the in the question so they think it's magic and i think it's magic uh, and then we know astrology is magical uh, so um that's um that's one of the things that uh, i wanted to share today they they think he's a magician which is very nice well, that is that that's very nice because my background actually was in the Western mystery tradition when I first joined a group when I was 16 and met some peculiar and rather weird people. My first teacher was a theosophist and an occultist who was uh, part of the Western mysteries. And so I learned to um, um, encompass and embrace symbolic sy symbols and uh, and you know to to work with them rather intently and meditatively and the word magic actually is the same as the word image if you think about it and and it, it is the use of images in a magical context and um it isn't just intuition as i say i try to put this in my little booklet that frank published in 2012 about about using images if you like to um, ask questions of them, rather div divinatory astrology, as it were. Uh, and, you know, we've been trying to do this in recent years, haven't we, Frank? You know, with, with various bits and pieces, try to encourage astrologers not just to look at the correspondences. Um, so, for example, the only correspondence I know of your chart, Nadia, is that moon in Sagittarius, you know, the, the kind of great enthusiasm across the airwaves. You can start to see it enthusiasm, um, a kind of a largesse of yourself, uh, you, that, that kind of prayer that you put out at the beginning, it's an emotional appeal to the universe. You can start to see the symbolism in your behavior, in your attitude come to life. Now that's not all you are, of course, but it's, 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 there's a largesse. And I mentioned about Frank Stupiter on, on, in Aquarius, and we could immediately see, any astrologer will know, that those interpretations are accurate in relation to the symbol. Jupiter is everything large and expansive and growing and so on. But the trick is here, how do we get to that before we know the person? You see, I can see it in you as behavior. I can see it in your loud voice. I can see it in your enthusiasm and your desire for more, your desire for better, your desire to connect all Jupiterian, not just connect, but you know, broadly connect people with an enthusiastic subject such as astrology and you know that you know that Jeffrey believes that astrology is very much connected to Jupiter divination of the stars ninth house stuff so the, the the trick is I suppose that 
one has to learn the correspondences and learn how or learn the rules of them so that the intuition can dive in if you, if you like and that requires a lot of training so it isn't just that i'm wildly intuitive um i'm emotionally intuitive mercury's in cancer but um it's to do with a long training on symbolic reality how to enter dive into the significances that signification i'm going to talk about talk and how to enter that zone and allow a certain freedom with it and that sometimes in dialogue as you know there's a there's a kind of picking up as we all do you know from behavior or attitude or little words that are said and your mind picks them up and feeds them back but it's about that and the as i say the trick is to try and say these things before you know the person but spotting the image within the person is the first thing and you can do that in bit you can do that but i learned behavioral astrology off of noel till he was very good at spotting the placement of a horror of, of, of a natal chart within the behavior of a person you know his, his astrology of the famed uh, a great book picks up all of that attitude behavior color even words are symbols in a sense and so anyway look i'm going on but that's that that's the heart of it now i don't know if you realize this i don't think you would maybe frank saw it but when you would say certain words like significators this like disco light effect would go off with your camera this flashing effect and i thought that that was such a wonderful synchronicity uh, yeah. that was coming together there yeah it's a party in here well the the, the you see uh, th there's two forms of astrology essentially and and one you could say is the astrology of reference that the the significators of a chart refer to something in the world and so therefore the the, the symbol points to that and you pick it up and, and it indicates so that's a very outward form of astrology you can predict events you can see things you can see details within the symbols and and they're referred to yes by 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 uh, by, by the chart you know your sagittarian uh, moon um i don't know how you actually uh, portray that let's say in your life but it's a reference to long distance running it's a reference to needing to stretch out it's an it's a reference to have more to do more and to create an enthusiasm for other people we know that's a basic astrology right but how you put that into your own life uh, we don't quite know you know so that's an astrology of reference that you refer the sign to the person whereas in the 70s and uh, actually from the 40, from the 30s dane radia started to do an astrology of meaning in other words they meant something to the individual and psychology came to the fore humanistic psychology transpersonal psychology in the 60s and 70s and then you had an astrology of meaning this means this this means your potential that can be actualized in the that was that was to do with house for sporters of course and so we, we 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 transfer from an astrology of referring things or fated dimensions of a chart to an astrology of meaning yes and so it was all to do with psychological meaning and and all that and for those interested in personal growth and development that was very important i found that that, that that's what i mean i do a lot of work with clients psychotherapeutic work and astrology and it, it, it's wonderful how it can show and express um the, the chart expresses itself in a psychotherapeutic context as people develop and you can see it jung did this um uh, but we've swung back a little bit i think to try and retrace our roots back to william lilly in the 17th century back to traditional astrology which is it, it can tell you actual things in the world it can it can tell you things to do uh, they're instructional elements they're not just meanings and possibilities or vague vague attenuances that you're supposed to do they can actually say to you you know so if i turned around to you and you have your your neptune let's say square that moon i don't know whether you do but the neptune's in um uh, pisces at the moment 
you need to be careful about too, being too involved, let's say, in that Neptune involvement. Otherwise, you won't get outside and breathe in the air and, and look at the horizon lines that you need in order to fulfill yourself, do you see? Do, do, do you understand? I'm just doing the, just doing a bit for you to, to, to follow that train of thought. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. This is what we as astrologers do, right? We yeah. interpret symbols. And I could see you like working through and fleshing out the symbol. Frank, exactly. did you have a question? Uh, no, I didn't. I, I'm I'm learning and watching Richard do his magic. Uh, Isn't no, it magic? No, yeah. No. Yeah. So, so that's the kind of thing, really. And we all do it. And we're all, that's the magic of it for us. We, we, how does this work? And so on. And then, but it's the training of that. And the fluidity with symbol, which Frank has shown in his work. Um, I mean, it's wonderful. I get, I still get a lot from it. My, my, as I say, my favorite is, uh, you know, the, the celebrities and uh, all of that, 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 that Frank's done. When I first met Frank, uh, you know, he showed me a cellar um, and it was full of was full of uh, tapes of uh, people's biographies. Had loads and loads and loads of them. I don't know whether you actually um, got them transferred to digital, but there were loads and loads of them. So he's done that, done that um, uh, study and investigation into the heart of a character, particularly famous celebrities and uh, this pervades his work and you can see the symbol and the actuality visible, clear, it's visceral, all of that stuff. Anyway, you can see I'm still excited about it. I am too. Now, when you talk about visceral, I'm reminded of like my first book uh, is called Astrology Realized. And the reason I chose that title was actually exactly. based on, thank you, but that was based on what I learned from Jeffrey Cornelius, because he has discussed in his academic work, the difference between a speculative reading and a realized reading. And so a speculative reading is when you are looking at an aspect in a chart and you know it could mean 15 things. And so you list those 15 things. But a realized reading is when you speak truth to the experience of the person who is living and the embodiment of that chart. And that was part of what I was realizing when you spoke about this visceral feeling, because Jeffrey actually describes it as a, a physical sensation when you know you've hit on a realized reading. Can I say something about that? Did you want to say something about that, Frank? Did you? No, no, no. <laughs> Um, Frank is being very polite right in, now. In, just... in his book, The Moment of Astrology, and I've spoken with Jeffrey about this, there is a single page that he put in afterwards because he had that realization between what is what, what he then called rather than a realized, he called it a difference between the speculative significator, in which it's, it could refer to anything, and a radical significator. And a, a radix is what's real can you use the chart as a realistic basis for saying anything? So radicality is, is about seeing the symbol in actuality. That's to do with signification too. Do you see what I mean? So that all that stuff I talked about, about being long distance running and having to get out, that's all speculative, right? But in, uh, until such time, and that was a guess, and I was just just riffing on Sagittarius and the Moon. Um, but until such time that that becomes a reality, that you haven't got out enough, that you haven't seen because you've been too, let's say, closed in, doing your Jupiterian and introverted way, perhaps in its more extroverted way. So when that becomes true, it becomes radical, and then then we're on to something. I've seen it. I've seen Frank do this loads of times. Once you're onto the symbol and you've got a kind of hook into the reality of it in a person's life, then it becomes a significator and a significant, a radical significator. And then you can trust it. And when you can trust it, there the magic begins, because for some reason, this thing, this bit of symbolic uh, placement on a chart has become a realized and actual thing an attitude, a behavior, whatever it is, in a person's life. Now that is magic, because the whole basis of magic is the, um, 
The whole basis of magic is when a symbol or an image actually becomes identified, not just as a reference to. It could mean that, it could mean that, it could mean that. No, in the specific circumstances, it has become identified with the thing that it's supposed to represent. Now, how do you, how do you account for that? Unless it's magic, because in magic, you know, the voodoo doll, the person, you know, if that person, if that doll becomes the actual person in a person's imagination, it can have, at certain levels, an effect. Do you see? So uh, I don't want to go into that too much, but the astrological significator becomes a realized significator. And you can see that you can talk about things in a person's life in a very open way through the symbol. And the, as I say, the key to that is an identification between the significator and the actualized um, uh, expression of that in a person's chart, psychologically, physically, however it is. And that's, that's why I'm doing this talk on signification and that process and how we can see that and um, hopefully move along with it, with our own intuitions and our own language, you see? It's not, you don't use my language. You, you, you have to fill out your own vocabulary with the signs and your own, um, you know, your, your own vignettes and your, the, the things that come along in metaphor in your mind to use images which arise. It's not just a verbal interpretation. Good interpretation can be uh, the precise placement of an excellent metaphor for something. They go, I understand what you mean. You know, so that's what this is all about, not just interpretation of meaning, but a reference to energies and dynamics that are realized in a person's life. I, I like that phrase, realized meaning, as opposed to speculative. Sorry, that was another long winded explanation, but uh, you've, you've gone on a subject which is very exciting to me. Well, it's um, also what you were saying about using quotes, which I do often, is, is another way of um, showing that and then once you have that once you've made that connection I think of what you're saying as well Richard is that you can then counsel you can then see it as um, understanding say the person is going through a Neptunian time or has a strong Pluto and we as astrologers have ways to navigate that whether it's a short period of time under a particular transit or whether it's a lifelong lesson of having moon square Pluto and so rather than just identifying it and connecting it, the next stage, of yes. course, is to be able to help with it, to advise with it, to be able to take the person somewhere uh, that, that feels comfortable for them or feels like a natural state of uh, positive progression after that. Uh, absolutely. That's the next phase. And that isn't shown by astrology, Nadia. That's shown by your own life experience. I don't believe you have to be a psychotherapist to give good advice in astrology. I don't, I don't believe that. That was something that was said a long time ago. Um, no, you can give very good advice by floating along or getting in the same boat as the symbol and seeing where it leads. But it takes skill. And I think some counseling techniques are important um not to get too lost in there and not to immediately uh, literalize a symbol there's the trick is yes, sometimes i do literalize because i feel ah that's that's the right thing to say and i don't mind being wrong that's another thing you can be wrong in the literal but sometimes if i get a picture it might not the picture might not relate in a literal sense but in a symbolic or atmospheric sense, it means a lot to a client. Sometimes I do get a picture. I mean, in one of our, didn't we? We had, I did this in one of our LSA lectures, you know, and we looked, we were trying to find out the name of somebody's cat. And uh, Venus, Venus was on the cusp of the six, which are all pets, obviously, in Gemini. And we all had a go and so and so. And it turns out that the name of the cat was Mittens. Right, mittens and mittens, you know, Venus often represents clothes or warm things and, and, and pleasant things. And of course, Gemini represents the hands which go on the hand, you see. So it was an exact, it was an exact thing. We, we had another one where Gemini was on the cusp and she had two dogs and one was fat and conjunction to Jupiter and another one was thin and so on. 
I mean, these things go on all the time. Uh, on our last- In astrological last day, circles, yes. Yeah, this you is know, what we, astrologers we, talk about for fun. This is what we do. These are well, our, our board game, our version of charades. Uh, this yeah, is exactly yeah, yeah. what Richard is describing, yes. You're so, you're so right, we, we love it, but- We do. That's the tuning in to the literal level of the symbol. We, we had another one where Venus ruled the fourth, right? And we, 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 we had a little game where somebody was, invisible on screen and I described it and I described their front door right so that was a, something that I learned many years ago you know go through the symbol see what you see and it was in Pisces in the ninth house so I went through it and I saw front door with the stained glass and a, and a religious symbol so simple isn't it ninth house religious symbol and blue very very Piscean and uh, she came on screen she told us her house was a spiritual retreat for Christian people, so she had a, and she had a, you know, a crucifix on the door, and and there was a stained glass, and half of it was that, and it was a Christian mystical retreat place. Do you see what I mean? So, the symbol became alive. Now, as I say, I can't tell you how your intuition then decides it's that in actual life, but with practice, sometimes you can guess well. And so this is what life's details in the chart look like, which is what you're going to be talking about at the conference. So once yeah. again, for everybody out there, that is the embracing the community, a celebration of astrologies. And so yeah. the astrological perspective that you're going to bring this autumn equinox weekend at this conference event is this exploration of significators and how you can really explore the symbol to understand what someone's pet may be named, for example, just like you illustrated, <laughs> yeah. your partner, yeah. so on, yeah. I like your uh, astrological charades metaphor. I think that's absolutely great. And it can be fun, but then what you're doing when you're seeing that, whether it's a the phraseology of a famous person or their statements and you can see the symbols in them, you are tuning into the essence it's what Frank said, getting to the heart of the chart, getting to the heart of a placement, you tune into a metaphor which captures it. Yes, you, which captures it. And, and in that moment between astrologer and client, something flashes, like you said, it, 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 there's a turn on or a, an emotional um, uh, reaction. And that emotional reaction, by the way, is so necessary to intuition because you feel you're onto something rather than a cold, dry statement, like some report. It isn't just a you know, set readings. You have to involve right. yourself. Well, what reports are, are speculative reading, right? This is going back yeah. to what you were saying. And Good the point. experience of an astrology reading with someone like you, where it is moving towards a realized experience, well, that can be very different. That is a, a type of cathartic moment, or the potential is there, for yeah. a truly transformative experience, an alchemical moment, if you will. And yeah. that can be when astrology really is at its best. Yes, of course, I think, I, th I think that's right. But that whole process is what Jeffrey's interested in. It's what I've been interested in a lot, that, that there's some magic in it. But the, 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 the tradition has always known this. We go back right through to tradition that signification is, but I don't think it's signification has been delineated that well. What it is, what it's for, how to involve it, how to practice, how to get involved in signification. Because signification is, a, is essentially a simple word. What it means is what's significant. And, and, and in any particular case, the interpretation of an astrological placement will be significant for that person. There is no definitive signification. That's the point about the astrology meaning that I was talking about. If you have a, a psychological system, a Hoover School or, or whatever, it can have great significance, that reading, right, or, or whatever, but it might not have that significance for everyone. And so you get to the limit of the system with which you interpret. That was my first astrology lecture about holistic astrology was that um, your interpretation depends on the system with which you, you, that you're using to interpret the horoscope. So why over the years, I've, I've done various systems, Till systems, Liz Green and all that and humanistic and Dane Roger, 
And then I find now that um, astrology tends to use me. So you allow it to say things, if you like, and hopefully there's a, it becomes alive with significance for the person. So that, that's what signification means. Yes, what is significant in a particular context. In orrery, it's about the object, about the querent. In natal reading, it's about what is, what is alive for the client so they can cling on and then make use of the reading uh, but particularly with the transits and progressions, of course, because often the client wants to know, or so we now understand the basis of the chart, how are we going to take this forward? But that's another discussion. Well, I just think you're so brilliant. I can see why Frank loves you so much, why he was like, you were one of the first names that came up when we were exploring oh, the vision Thanks, of this conference. And I mean, a part of me feels like I'm back in uni, like you're just <laughs> feeding my soul, that nerd part of me inside. And I just love it so, so very much. So I am so looking forward to your talk. So your talk is Life's Details in the Chart. Yes, so Richard right. is going to help people to learn how to use the horoscope to describe the actual details in a person's life. And you'll see the horoscope come alive in specific detail as well. Frank, did you want to say anything? Just, um, it's been great to have a, a three-way chat. It's been yes. fun. Yeah, it has. It's been fun. And uh, I think there should be more dialogue like this in astrology. Uh, people come from different backgrounds. They have their own uh, associations they've made in their astrological practice. You clearly have, Nadia, Frank has. And that dialogue creates a, 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 an excitement rather than, you know, a challenge between astrologers. It's, it can be it can be fun. It comes alive in dialogue. It's a very Geminian process, I think. Yes, it can be. And I think that this conference in particular, bringing together astrologies from so many different backgrounds and schools and systems and interpretations, uh, I think that you're going to add your own unique voice that uh, likely will make it that much more richer experience. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's coincident with my name, Richard. Richard, that, yes, will, that's do. Right. that will do. That will do nicely. Richie Rich. Let's call you Richie Rich. Okay. If you want, <laughs> we can do that if you want. I am an Aquarius son, so no. I'm going to make everybody my best friend. That's how I move through the world. Well, you have your style, Nadia. It's very clear. Yes, my style but that Rich, makes people Richie, my best friend. Richie Rich sounds to me like some kind of uh, uh, um, uh, show host or something. <laughs> You know, you come on, here he is, Richie Rich. Oh. Guess your sun sign, here he goes. The, yeah, the magician, yeah, Richie Rich. The magician, yeah. Yes. Well, one version of the magician, right? Five dollars a shot, there we go. <laughs> You're too learned for that, yes. We'll stick to Richard. Richard will do, fine. Let's do that, yes. Well, thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, That's Richard. Been great. Thank you, Frank. I love you. I love you all. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And until we connect again, take care. Bye. Well, I'm looking forward to it very much. And uh, cheerio for now. Bye-bye.